see energy going. Let's let's jump ahead. It's 2010. Let's jump ahead to 2040. What is your ideal scenario, and where do you think this is going? By 20, we're, we're looking way out in the future, 2040 sort Let's of. Let's go 20, 20, 30. Let's go 20 years in the future. 20 years in the future. It, it's not unfeasible that we will hit a critical mass with energy, very similar to what we hit with information. You know, for a long time, it was very expensive to transport, store, and manage a byte of data. And then we got to the point where it wasn't expensive for a byte, but it was expensive for a kilobyte. And then it wasn't expensive for a kilobyte, but a megabyte. And then not a megabyte, but a terabyte. And now we're going up and up and up. And that curve is exponential with data. And the price of data has gone down correspondingly. So right now, a gigabyte of data is essentially free to move, to store, to deal with. That price fluctuation is possible with energy. And it's only possible in the same way it was possible with data. The original companies that controlled data storage, management, and transportation had to blossom into a million companies that had to blossom into millions and millions and millions and hundreds of millions of companies. That blossoming created a downward pressure on price. We're going to see the same thing in energy. The question is when. When do we see the main energy the four major players in the energy world, which are the four major oil companies, when do we see them start to lose grip? And as terrible as the BP oil spill is, it could herald the beginning of them breaking. Right, right. Have you spoken with any oil companies that are averse to this oil technology? I know ExxonMobil has put, what, 600 million or committed 600 million to invest in this new architecture and right. this new technology. After fuel came out, ExxonMobil put $600 million into algae to fuel. Congratulations. So. Yeah. So, thank, thank God we screened it in Texas. Yes, yes, yes. But do you know of any companies, any oil companies, that don't want to hear about this or not putting money in? Oh, BP is also investing in this now as well. Yeah, BP Biofuels is actually rising up on the list. Yeah, I think they're all you know, tentatively investing in it, but it's hard to sell a company that has a 100 to 150 year history in managing a substance that no one else can get to. It's hard to get them to invest in a technology that's ultimately going to be a runaway democratization of energy. And they know that. Right. They know that. So they're willing to invest as much as it takes to have some control over the industry, but they're not willing to invest what it would take to fully push this out into the public sector. Because remember, when you make that transition from private to public, when it becomes you know, from four companies to 400,000 companies, suddenly they've lost control and that's the number one thing that they've got to do as a company they've got to keep control of the market so it, it's not necessarily that 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 they would be conspiratorial mm -hmm. in their efforts to kill algae so much as it just threatens their basic business model sure sure now when do you feel that algae will be a standard oil at a pump in los angeles I think it, it depends on this breaking point. It depends on the, the movement from, from private to public sector. But if the growth continues, if the growth that we have in the algae industry continues mm -hmm. for the next five years, algae will be a commercial fuel. If it continues for the next 10 years, it'll be a public fuel. What can a person do today to perhaps get uh, algae moved into traditional gas stations sooner. Yeah, well, well, then, you know, we really break the personal responsibility down into three areas. Uh, tra personal transportation, you know, how you live and what you do politically. And I'm an activist. I'm an environmental activist. And a lot of people say, oh, environmental activists hug trees. And I say, no, environmental activists are people who get off their couch. And whether you go to a political meeting or whether you go to your CSA, your community supported agriculture garden, you're an environmental activist and it's okay to be an environmental activist. You know, we need millions of environmental activists. So the reality is what can you do? The first area, personal transportation. If you want to see algae happen, make sure that your senator or your congressman is part of the algae caucus in Washington, D.C. And they're, they're part, you know, that's a they can get involved in that. They can, they can begin to facilitate algae companies in their local area. I mean, there's algae companies all over the world starting up. Israel, Australia, Japan, 
uh, the U.S. doesn't need to be in the uh, tail end of this revolution. We need to be in the front. So politically active, first thing. Second thing, personal transportation. Make sure that your next car has a plug on it. There are seven new cars coming out in the next 24 months with plugs on them. They plug in. And uh, Fisker, the, the Tesla, the Coda, the Leaf, the GM Volt, uh, we've got another Toyota coming out. They've got the Prius and the RAV4, both coming out with a plug on them. Uh, so there, there's a whole plethora of new vehicles. And people go, well, I don't want to support coal energy. The truth is we're overproducing at night. We produce 30% more power than we need to. Plug your car in at night. Use that extra energy for something rather than just letting the CO2 go to waste. The first day you drive your electric car, your plug-in, is the dirtiest day you drive it. From that point onward, the grid will get cleaner, and so will your car. So the beautiful thing about people who've driven EVs for the past 8 or 10 years is they have almost no maintenance bills. They have to replace windshield wipers, tires, brakes, and that's about it. Yep. So imagine you could drive for a penny a mile. That's what you can get with a plug-in car. So algae, politically active, plug-in car, just go get one. Make sure when you get your next car, it's got a plug on it. And the, and the third thing is really around your lifestyle. How do you live? You know, a big part of the new movie, Spill, is going to be about redesigning cities, the new urbanism movement. Mm -hmm. So live where you work. Work where you live. Yes. You know, we live uh, two miles from this office. We drive the Algeus to, the, to work uh, when it's cloudy or when we don't want to ride our bikes, and we use electricity. So, you know... We know everybody here. We know our community. We have our health food store. We've got our farmer's market. Everything that we need to live is right here within a two-mile radius of our house. Mm -hmm. And that is really what America could be. You could have everything, your food, your resources, everything you need to exist could be within two miles of your house. Can you imagine what that would do to the 200 billion gallons of fuel we use each year in the U.S.? Oh, absolutely. You wanna, yeah, you want to get off of oil? Get off of driving your car as a necessity for life. And if you don't need your car, then you've done it. You're, you're really in the green then. Now, it's funny that you said that because yeah. I actually took my bike GS here today. Cool. It's uh, my bike GS yes. is uh, powered by fuel. Oh, yeah. And the fuel is algae. This I actually is only ate this this morning. Hawaiian I actually spirulina, yeah. I had Hawaiian spirulina, it's which beautiful. is algae. Yeah. And I ate this algae, and then I rode my bike over here, and my bike was actually powered by... Algae. algae. And, and ironically, what do I have in my pocket? Those look like, like algae pills. Algae pills, you know. That's so terrific. It's, so it, the beauty of these, of these sort of revolutionary thoughts is, what if we grew spirulina in our cities? Right. You know, what if we grew it on top of our buildings, intermixed with the solar panels? And that's the new ur urbanism movement, and that's really where we're going. You know, you hear of these, um, these transition towns. This is a new movement that sort of intersects with new urbanism that says, look, it, it ain't going to look like this for much longer. Yeah. You know, we are going to hit a wall. There's a billion people in China, over a billion people in India who want this energy. We're going to have to start to think of how do we do everything within our community? And if you can do that, if you can grow your food in your CSA and, and, and bike to work or take your electric car to work, and, 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 and everything will start to change. And that's yeah. really where it gets exciting. Now, should I call it yeah. the bike Mias or the bike Gius? I mean, I, 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 I'm, yeah, it's both by, by me or by yeah, algae. Yeah. It's a little, a little both. Right. Yeah. So cool. Great. Yeah. Great. Well, thank you again so much, Absolutely. Josh. Take care. Thanks for bye -bye. having me on. Thank you. Yep. Bye-bye. This is a product that really stood out to me. Post-consumer waste, yeah. uh, fully compostable, organic lip balms. So, so smart. Yeah, so that's a little gift to you. Oh, thank you. But, uh, yeah, it's, uh, it's awesome. really neat. It's from it. organic essence, and they're doing a whole series of lines. They're doing a whole series of uh, cosmetic uh, jars and things See, like that, too. this is too. where the future is. That's right. The future is going to be with people making this stuff locally. Right. You know, from recycled stuff that right. they recycle here in the community. Right. And then everything is biodegradable and non-toxic, which right. is, I mean, you could, you know, you could go to the point where you're literally, you know, you're growing the whatever, you know, that needs, that you, you need for the fat for this. Right, you know, exactly, that is exactly. Soybeans or sunflowers or coconut oil or any of that. You know, I was doing yeah. a demo down at the Venesico Fest and I was showing people, you know, this is made from trash. Right. And it turns into soil. Yeah. That's a beautiful thing. Yeah, you that's know? where everything so, is going. Yeah. Even our cars are going to be that, like That's that. right, that's right. Are you familiar with William McDonough and Cradle to Cradle? I'm yes, sure you are. Course. Yeah, so yeah. I'm going to be talking a little bit about that next week at Eco Tuesdays. Cool. Talking about how that works and 
it's really interesting stuff what he's doing. You know, with his he's got the uh, Green Products Institute, got the GPII yeah. uh, Institute. Uh, it's a revolution. It's, it's, it's a totally a revolution. Yeah. Thank you for this. Right, Appreciate you. it. Take care. Have Thank a great day. Mind.